Good evening. This is the regular council meeting of Village of Merrickville Wolford Council on Monday, March 13th at 7 p.m. with Mayor uh, Mike. Thank you, Mr. Robertson. Uh, we're going to move on to uh, call to order. Call this meeting to order a bit late. Sorry for the, for the late start, but we had to uh, seek an opinion uh, from a legal advisor, and uh, now we're on to the agenda. So, any disclosures of pecuniary or interest or the general nature thereof? I see none. So, we'll move on to approval of the agenda. So, we have an amendment to the agenda. Uh, be it hereby resolved that the Council of the Corporation of Village of America Wolford does hereby approve the agenda of the regular council meeting of March 13, 2023, as amended. Uh, Councillor Rule, will you move, please? Yes. Thank you. Councillor Maitland, will you second, please? Yes. And all those in favor? Oh, sorry. It's an amendment for uh, the paper we were yeah, yeah, okay. at, the, at the desk. All those in favor? Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so we'll move on to item number four, approval of the minutes. So, uh, that'll be 27th. Uh, be hereby resolved the Council of the Corporation of the Village of America Wolford does hereby approve minutes of the regular council meeting of February 27th, 2023. Councillor Iowa, will you move, please? Yes. Thank you. Councillor uh, Grill, will you second, please? Yes. Thank you. All those in favor? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next item, we're going to go hereby. He hereby resolved the Council of the Corporation of the Village of America Wolford does hereby approve the minutes of a special council meeting of March 6, 2023. Councillor Maitland, will you move, please? Yes. Thank you. Councillor Grew, will you second, please? Yes. Thank you. Uh, all those in favor? Thank you. Thank you. Next item. We hereby resolve that the Council of the Corporation of the Vehicle. Uh, of the Village of Maricopa Wolford do hereby receive the minutes of the Maricopa Public Library Board meeting February 9, 2023, for information purposes. Councillor Grew, will you please? Yes. Thank you. Councillor Iron, will you second, please? Yes. Thank you. All those in favor? Thank you. Carry. And, oh, there we go. It hereby resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the Village of Maricopa Wolford does hereby receive a delegation from Robin Eagle, Maricopa Wolford, and the District Chamber of Commerce President regarding an overview of the Chamber of Commerce objectives for 2023 for information purposes. Councillor Allen, will you move, please? Yes. And Councillor Maitland, will you second? Yes. Please? Thank you. And Robin, can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, um, uh, welcome and thank you very much for uh, receiving our delegation. Uh, so, in early January, when uh, Council and Mayor Cameron uh, were newly elected, uh, we met with um, Mayor Ca uh, Cameron, and he actually asked us to uh, make a presentation to. The council to overview what exactly the Chamber of Commerce does because I think there's some some clarification areas that I think um, going forward would be uh, great to be clarified. So firstly, um, uh, we have uh, the PowerPoint presentation that we shared with you 
And the first page basically is, is outlining that we are 100 plus members strong. Uh, we have three levels of membership uh, currently for retail uh, businesses that benefit from uh, tourism and uh, marketing and promotion activities. We have a home-based service organization and we have not-for-profit uh, level of membership. So each of those levels um, uh, have various um, uh, uh, degrees of value that we provide to them. Um, so that just going forward that you, you know there's three levels. Um, we basically support our members through uh, social media, marketing and promotion, uh, through engagement and through networking. And we have uh, members um, that fall within those various three categories. And we also have boards of directors that are responsible and leads for those two very uh, important um, prongs of our organization. Um, our social media, I don't know if you've received our latest um, uh, March newsletter, but there are uh, strong engagement uh, with our social media and Instagram pages. And you can also check out our website, which is very much a, a forward, outward facing um, a platform, miraclechamber.ca, where we list all our member organizations. We have a what's happening page, which we've uh, incorporated a events calendar, and we encourage all of our members to post uh, their upcoming activities and events there so that the Chamber website will be viewed as like the one-stop shop not only for um, visitors coming but also our local residents. We're very focused on ensuring our residents know what's going on. Uh, we work in partnership uh, with the Village of Miracle Wolford, the United Counties of Leeds Grenville, and we are also a member of the Ontario Chamber of Commerce who uh, advocates at a, a higher level of, of um, governance, if you will, between our local uh, chamber and the province of Ontario. And just to be clear, um, our board of directors is a volunteer board of directors and predominantly our um, business leaders in our community. Um, just as a, a sample of, of how we want to um, collaborate with our um, municipality, the Destination Magazine is a very much um, um, it's a very popular, um, oh, thank you, <laughs> um, uh, resource, not only for um, our, our visitors, but also for residents. Uh, and Destination Magazine is going to be um, uh, the, uh, the final uh, deadline, if you will, for submission is this Friday. Um, so we're looking to perhaps um, partner with the municipality in that submission, but that's another layer of um, of collaboration. But I just want to be clear that the chamber is not, um, doesn't have the resources to organize events. The only events that we really organized was the family day event that we had on uh, February 20th, which was a uh, thank you and, and um, acknowledgement to our residents uh, for supporting and shopping local. So that's really the only event that we coordinate. Um, so going on to the next slide, uh, just to be clear, our vision, um, the, uh, the board had a, a strategic planning session last year where we actually uh, formalized our vision and mission. And we also developed a, um, a business plan with an associated budget. I think that's the first time that the Chamber of Commerce has actually gone that far to establish itself uh, within these uh, confines. So essentially to thrive, we work together. So not only with our business community, um, but with our, our surrounding municipalities as well. And the way we do that is we focus on our business community through effective partnerships, marketing, promotion, uh, and through advocacy. And we also take into consideration strongly the heritage and diversity of our rural and urban reality. And um, Mayor Cameron, in our discussion back in January, really asked that the chamber reach out to the Wolford um, uh, municipal, the, the Wolford area, to see if we can engage that um, component of our municipality. And we will be doing that. And you'll see that in our um, upcoming objective slide. Um, so uh, going on to the next slide, uh, the objectives are basically listed, um, if you will kind of get an overview of them. So the entrance signs coming into the village, there's four of them. They belong to the municipality. 
However, the content is responsibility of the chamber. Uh, so this year we're hoping to refresh the, the content of those entrance signs uh, by having a consistent image and also using those entrance signs as a means to um, promote uh, the upcoming events that our member driven organizations are um, promoting and hosting. Uh, also, we're going to, like I mentioned, trying to engage more with our Wolford um, uh, businesses, and we are also uh, hoping to develop a farm to fork uh, tour so that um, market based uh, organizations or farms uh, that have um, farm stands, uh, we can actually develop a uh, self guided map where people can scoot around, like say to Kilmarnock or uh, to other uh, like Ireland's um, uh, or Jasper and take in the farm to fork experience. Uh, we've also subscribed to Grant Match, which is a program that the, the government has uh, and it's free money. And so basically we're, we're hoping to encourage our member organizations to uh, be aware of the grants that are available. For instance, latest uh, is the uh, based on the International Women's Day, there's a bunch of grant opportunities that uh, female uh, business owners uh, can take advantage of. And in Merrickville, there are a number of female, uh, not only owners or um, co-owners that could take advantage of that grant opportunity. Uh, we've also developed uh, a unique uh, Merrickville logo that we've uh, put onto uh, tote bags. And so this is the first opportunity the chamber has taken to um, promote merchandise, if you will, in Merrickville. And uh, these bags will be made available in various stores and hopefully at the depot as well. Uh, and all funds raised from the sales of these uh, tote bags will go to our Streetscape um, subworking group of the chamber. And that organization, uh, the subworking group is basically focused on ensuring that the beautification of Merrifield Wolford is consistent with a Victorian style theme, um, beautification uh, focus, if you will. Um, Ontario by bike is another opportunity we're looking to uh, pursue uh, a, um, a business friendly certification. Uh, and the only kind of element that is missing from being able to qualify for the certification is, is bike racks. And you would think that that would be a simple thing, uh, but Merrickville doesn't have bike racks. Um, so we're looking to secure a few sets of bike racks in areas that are central so that um, uh, cyclists coming through Merrickville and even our residents could make use of uh, securely um, putting their bikes somewhere so that they can shop in the area and uh, know that their bikes, which are very expensive, are well secured. So that's an opportunity we're pursuing. Um, another thing that we're really trying to uh, promote are our member organizations who organize events. There's uh, quite a number of them actually, and I'm sure you're aware that it's the events uh, that come to Merrickville uh, on the heels of volunteer organizations that are a huge economic driver for our area. So the chamber is very much engaged in working towards uh, establishing um, a consistent um, event uh, kind of checklist, if you will, uh, in collaboration with the municipality. Uh, I mentioned the Streetscape Working Group. So um, last year, uh, the chamber uh, applied for and received a, a grant that the municipality grant, uh, matched. So yeah, that grant was uh, focused on securing some lampposts, Victorian style lampposts. Uh, we were hoping to have solar powered lights. Um, however, just the real reality of um, those luminaires um, and having Canadian uh, certification uh, kind of um, wasn't feasible. So in collaboration again with the municipality, um, the Streetscape Working Group will be securing uh, some lampposts to be put in strategic locations throughout the, uh, the village core uh, that will be able to have brackets for our um, beautiful flower baskets and, and seasonal banners. Uh, and we also have ensured there's a dedicated budget in the, um, the chamber uh, budget. So next slide. So um, just uh, because we're talking to the municipality and the councillors, we wanted you to be aware um, that the chamber is very much uh, wishing to collaborate and um, engage the municipality because together we work together and we thrive. Uh, 
So uh, one of the initiatives that we're working on, and uh, Sally has already met with uh, Doug Robertson recently to talk about a resident welcome. Uh, we already have a business welcome package uh, that you'll find on our website. But this is intended for new residents to the area so that when um, residents receive their first um, tax bill, they'll also receive a welcome from the business community. And this would be um, uh, something in the nature of, say, coupons or discounts uh, for first time residents to come and explore and see what uh, beautiful diversity of business uh, uh, opportunities there are in Merrickville. Uh, the regional tourism strategy was uh, developed by United Counties of Leeds and Granville, uh, and the, uh, the chamber had some input into that. So we're looking to also partner with the municipality uh, to, um, uh, you know, um, uh, fulfill some of the objectives of that strategy. Uh, economic development uh, is a budget line, I'm sure, in the municipality. And so as the chamber is uh, the key driver of that, we would really like to partner with the municipality. And like I mentioned, the um, destination magazine, that might be one way that we could uh, provide a collaborative, um, succinct uh, submission to destination magazine to demonstrate um, that the municipality and the chamber are working together to promote Merrickville as a destination. Uh, as I mentioned also, um, the Chamber organized a family day, uh, which was a, uh, a thank you again to our residents for shopping and supporting local. Uh, we will also be providing um, marketing and promotion through social media for the, uh, the May 6th uh, garage sale, which, uh, garage sale rather, um, which uh, last year drew a significant draw from a wide range uh, throughout the uh, the area of Brockville, Ottawa, even as far as the United States. Um, we are looking uh, forward to having council uh, assign a council liaison to participate in chamber uh, meetings. Uh, these are monthly meetings that we host in, in person. Uh, and last year, um, Councillor um, Foster was our liaison, and we found it a great benefit to be able to have a direct link between the chamber and the council so that, you know, there's there's clear communication lines. So uh, looking forward to have that person uh, dedicated uh, to participate in chamber meetings. Mm -hmm. And the Streetscape uh, Working Group is a sub-working group. It's uh, comprised of um, a chamber member, residents as well, and um, uh, chamber residents uh, basically um, to basically promote and enhance the beautification of Merrickville and Wolford. So there are some projects that the Streetscape Working Group have in play to uh, ensure that there are seasonal decorating um, throughout the, um, the whole year, the whole calendar year, uh, in, as additional to uh, participating and promoting Christmas in Merrickville, which is a significant event for uh, our business community as well as Merrickville. Um, so there are a number of initiatives that the Street Seat Working Group have in play. And like, as I mentioned, the, uh, the tote bags will be a great um, fundraiser for this, um, the Streetscape Working Group. So next slide. So again, uh, just in closing, I want to uh, enforce and enhance the fact that together we thrive uh, to work together. So uh, we are looking that's um, very uh, open armed, if you will, to uh, to working together with the municipality to uh, fulfill a number of our objectives. Um, and uh, it's a it's a very um, I'm looking forward to this opportunity very much so. So uh, I think that's our last slide. And I just wanted to, to give you an idea of who our members are, our board of directors. Um, and I, if there's any questions. Thank you very much. Is there any questions from council members in regards to the presentation to the chamber? No, no, I don't. Uh, don't see any questions, Robin. I re really appreciate you taking the time and uh, filling in what the uh, chamber has planned for the 2023 season. Looking forward to creating and establishing a well uh, 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 solidified working relationship uh, as we move forward through our four years. So I do appreciate it. And uh, once we have uh, back to full strength in council, we will definitely be setting a liaison. With it. So thank you very much. Appreciate that, uh, your, uh, your engagement and enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you. Yeah, uh, so you just need to call the vote on that. Yeah, worship. So all those in favor? 
Be hereby resolved that Council of Corporation of the Village of Marital Wolford does hereby receive road need study uh, by John Eric Dillon, CEO of Street Logic and Street Scan for information purposes. Uh, Councillor Maitland, will you move the motion? Yeah. Please? And uh, Councillor Crew, will you second it, please? Yes. Thank you. And do we have John on our Zoom? Good evening. All right. Um, we'll turn the floor over to you. And, uh, Thank you very much for attending this. Uh, uh, yeah, thanks for thanks for having me. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Perfect. Okay. Um, so I figured I would start with uh, just maybe a few minutes, a few slides, just give a little context to the project uh, that we completed a few years ago. Uh, dive into the software application, show you the uh, the data that was uh, collected that is uh, currently stored within the application, and then uh, I'll open it up for questions. And if you guys have any questions, you know, throughout. You know, please let me know, but uh, I'll let you guys kind of steer where you want to go with the conversation from, from that point. Does that sound good? Thank you very much. Okay. Give me one second here. My PowerPoint seems to be a little slow, but I'm sure you guys can see the screen. Is it? Uh, you guys see a full screen? Yeah. Yeah. Give it one second here. Oh, okay. Okay. So you guys can see it okay now? Yes. Thank you. Perfect. Okay. Uh, so, a little context if you guys don't know who we are, uh, Street Scan performs these types of assessments, uh, you know, for nearly 300 municipalities across uh, both Canada and the US. Um, we have a strategic partnership with uh, local authority services uh, that, that came into effect quite a few years ago. And so in, in Ontario specifically, we work with a little bit over than 100 municipalities to kind of perform these types of services uh, on an ongoing basis. So usually we collect data for um, municipalities on a, a three to five year schedule, which I kind of talk about. Um, and we offer a whole software suite, you know, regarding asset management, work order management, citizen engagement, and all that uh, kind of stuff. So usually why we uh, were brought in uh, to, uh, to municipalities is typically because there's a lack of data to kind of begin with. Um, oftentimes, uh, cities are starting off for the first time. They haven't really collected any data whatsoever on their streets uh, or the types of infrastructure, you know, that we, we go out and scan. And when you're lacking that data, it is really challenging to uh, garner support, whether it could be through internal stakeholders or uh, external, you know, from from um, from residents. And when you're lacking that support, it truly uh, becomes challenging to achieve uh, the right resources that are required to maintain that infrastructure in good standing. Um, and so to kind of quickly explain a little bit, you know, basic pavement management practice, Roads deteriorate, uh, and there's a certain point in time where they can deteriorate very quickly if not um, intervened early on to start maintaining it into a more preventative treatment. And so if you follow the red line, it just deteriorates, and then if you do nothing, then you have to uh, spend money 25 or so years down the street. And then if you were to intervene at specific intervals, um, you can maintain that same street in relatively good standing. And so the opportunity cost attached to this is if you were to uh, take a look at one kilometer stretch of road, the prices have probably increased, uh, you know, with everything in the last few years, but it still um, paints the same picture in terms of the ratio between what it would be to maintain a street uh, rather than just let it deteriorate and have to be in a state of uh, complete major rehab repair after 25 years. So there's a lot of money to be saved if you maintain and proactively treat the streets at the right time is essentially what we're trying to accomplish here. <clears throat> so how do we come into the picture? Well, we scanned uh, about every three years, uh, municipalities that we work with. Um, we go through an AI data processing flow, which I'm gonna show you how the data is collected. We go through and, and extrapolate all the information and other assets in the right of way. I believe we did your traffic signs and manholes and catch basins as well too back in the day. And then Street Logics, the software that I'm going to show you briefly, is used to manage, plan, and update. So this is where you want to get in, run your capital programs, uh, update the work that's actually been performed on an annual basis so that uh, the conditions are then adjusted uh, properly within the system. So therefore, that, therefore, it doesn't 
you don't have to scan every single year. If the data is kept up to date, the system will deteriorate those same assets, those streets, um, if it's maintained properly. And then after that, uh, if you have a work order management system or uh, with us or someone else, then you can take that information and actually go out and execute the, uh, the work that's being done. So on the car itself, um, when we go out, we have uh, two um, different sensing systems that are collecting data continuously. So we have the 360 camera that's on the roof. This is capturing similar to your kind of Google street view um, that's going around. And then we have uh, 3D cameras that are in the back of the car. And so in each one of those black boxes, there's two um, stereo cameras that are reconstructing a 3D point cloud of the road surface. So this is what we're using to derive the um, distresses that are found on the streets. And then we use the 360 camera, the technicians to quality control to ensure that the right distresses classification is all being um, instrumented in there. So kind of give a little example, the left-hand side is what the image looks like when it's first captured. It gets reconstructed into 3D. We can start to isolate the pixelation in the image um, so you can see the, the cracks and then we can extrapolate that using artificial intelligence so that we classify that as a type of crack. And that would be a very severe um, type of alligator crack you know, that would be found. So we go through this continuously and we're collecting, um, sorry about that. So we're collecting uh, a bunch of information, uh, a bunch of different different uh, distresses that are all being computed into a uh, pavement condition uh, algorithm. So PCI, so this is how we classify each street into different buckets. And those different buckets are gonna drive what type of treatment should be applied on that specific road surface. So what you're seeing here, this applies to just surface treated roads. I know that there's some discussions about gravel that we can kind of quickly, um, talk about tonight. This is really just for surface treated roads on how we collect that data, analyze the various different distresses, compute into a pavement condition index, and then from that, drive the decision making on um, the back end. So once we pull all that data in, so on the street scan side, we're grabbing, we like to refer to street scan as like the body and street logics as the brain. So all of this raw data is coming into the software application. Um, we're then adding on top of that climate weather data patterns, traffic counts, um, political influences. So in here, this is, you know, sometimes we have uh, budgets that want to be split between uh, different wards or different se sections of the, the community. Um, there could just be different purposes of the project. It's not always has to do with pavement. So that can be brought in and tailored. Other critical infrastructure projects are a big one too. So if you know you have to rip up a specific street in let's say two years to replace a water main, there's no point in resurfacing the entire street in year one because you're just gonna be back at it again and ripping it up. And there's a huge utility uh, cut that's gonna be put in place. And then the cost benefit ratio. So preventative treatments versus reconstruction. And this is a challenge uh, the council has uh, continuously because a lot of people will complain about bad roads um, and the best pavement practice is your money should be going to actually the good roads before the bad roads. Uh, if you're, it's a lot more cost effective to preserve a good road than it is to um, let it essentially deteriorate and then having to go uh, for a reconstruction down the road. And so obviously it's a balancing act. You can't just completely neglect the bad roads, um, but it's very important to maintain a certain budget into preventative treatments to keep those good roads in good standing, uh, ultimately at the end of the day. Any questions so far? Questions, Council? Um, when you are uh, when you're putting your equation for, or putting your inputting your information for the equation to figure out how fast the roads are going to deteriorate, does usage play into that at all? Yes, yes, hundred um, percent. So we so that's a good question. So we we use uh, traffic counts, and those traffic counts are typically if there's no traffic study that was performed, uh, we use the functional class of the street and the functional class will have, um, based on um, ASTM standards, there's um, uh, like an estimated traffic flow that each one of those streets are gonna receive. So it could be off uh, depending on, you know, if, if, there, if there's a certain local street that gets significant traffic volume for whatever reason, uh, then obviously the estimates are gonna be off. Um, but if you have traffic count data, then that information can be brought into the software as a, an additional factor as part of the deterioration. But yes, traffic information is important. Thank you. Uh, so does your firm uh, do traffic counts as well? It's indicated on your uh, screen here. So do you do that uh, on site or do you do it by other means? It's not, a, it's not a service that we perform. Um, typically, I would say most of the municipalities are content with the estimation that comes out of the functional class on the traffic counts. 
Um, there may be certain streets that you know that are just, you know, get a lot more uh, traffic uh, out of it. So, you know, you, you could tailor those traffic counts to specific street segments and there's a fair amount of firms, um, you know, some that we do know that we work with that we could recommend, you know, if, they, if there was a, a traffic count study that one that you wanted to be able to perform on those. Thank you. Any other questions? No, oh, you can continue, please. Okay, sounds good. I just stop sharing this one. I'm just going to close this one down and go into the software itself. Okay, can you guys see my screen again? Yes, we can. Okay, perfect. Um, so I'm in Street Logic. So this is a web based application. Uh, so this uh, uh, municipality has access to this uh, to the system here. And ultimately what we're looking at right now is a map of uh, the municipality with the streets color coded based on the condition index uh, that we were just describing before, you know, as the, uh, the, the assessment that was done a few years back. Um, so how we use the application, and I know that there's, we have sidewalk information in here as well too, and I think we have traffic signs and a few other assets. I'm just gonna talk about the streets. If you have questions about those assets, um, we can certainly dive into some of that, but uh, I'll focus on the streets for, um, for today. So we have two sections to it. I just went over to the dashboard. So here we're able to see the average condition of the streets. We're looking at a 60 on 100. Um, sidewalks are in better shape uh, compared to the compared to the streets. Total length, we have 49. These are center line kilometers. Uh, so this does not factor the uh, amount of lane kilometers you have. And we're talking about the total backlog of 9.9 .9 million. This is all, all these statistics are driven off of the decision trees um, that are in the application, which I'm just gonna briefly touch upon right here. So when we get the data, we spend time building these out um, and helping you know each customer kind of go through. Okay, well, a different PCI brackets are going to drive different types of maintenance suggestions that are going to be um, you know through this process. In this case here, we have both uh, two types of surface treated roads. So you have asphalt and you have surface treated, which would be more of like a. I'm assuming it's like a tar and chip, um, and. Each one of those buckets are going to point to these maintenance suggestions, which has a unit cost attached to it on a per square uh, meter basis. Um, each one of these repair methods are built out in a database here. And so you build out these repair methods and you indicate what is the condition impact. So if you were to perform a crack seal on a 90 to 100 street, then it's going to bring it back up to 100 is basically what this is saying. And it has different you know, PCI thresholds here where this is going to fluctuate. So once all these settings are properly set up, um, we go through, you know, the deterioration curves, uh, there's different repair priorities. Um, so this is looking at various, what, how do you prioritize what street gets uh, done before another one? Uh, right now, it's just currently looking at the condition, um, but you can, you, can, you can evaluate multitude of different things in here. Functional class is usually a big one. You're going to want to focus on your higher traffic volume streets versus your uh, local streets. Um, so these are different factors that could be brought into the equation. And so when I go back over to the map basis uh, and we get into the budgeting side of it, I haven't looked at the decision trees. I haven't looked at the unit cost and the repair methods. You know, that's something that, you know, we, we, we can certainly uh, revisit. We can get a pavement engineer in house to, to evaluate these and see, I'm not sure how much the system has been touched since the last scan that we did, which was a few years ago. But I just want to show you what tools are at your disposal and, and how this application um, works. So if we can run a quick three-year budget, I'm just going to throw in a completely random number, uh, $350,000 know, a year for the next three years with an inflation factor of 2%. And you click apply. Uh, and this is building out the budget you know, within seconds. So it goes through about 4,000 different budget permutations on the back end to optimize um, based on the decision trees and the repair priorities, what streets to be able to select. And then we just go ahead and we load that budget and then it's going to populate on the map and it's going to show you exactly what streets to perform in which given year that you want to perform um, that work. And it's going to show you, you know, statistics on how the performance of those of the street network is going to behave over that time. Does anybody have any questions on so far on that? Any questions, Gabby? Uh, not at the moment. Thank you. Okay. Um, I mean, this is really scratching the surface. There's a lot of different tools in here um, that you can do. So this is building a budget. Sometimes you don't know how much money you need. Um, 
So you want to uh, target a condition as opposed to a specific budget. So you want to know how much money it's going to take to get to, let's say you're at 60 now, if you want to get to 70 within five years on the average network. Uh, and then you can also compare multiple scenarios. So there's there's a fair amount of tools that are there, disposable, um, uh, at, at uh, available, you know, to the to the municipality to kind of build out those types of capital planning and budgets, um, and and then just the ability as a, from a GIS standpoint, you can visualize a lot of the different data that's there. So we even have uh, every single distress that was captured. Um, just look at here, pavement distresses. So if we zoom in on the map, you can see uh, every single distress on every single street that was captured, identified, and that goes into that formula that I was describing before that's <clears throat> for the pavement condition index. That sums up pretty much the overview that I wanted to give um, on you know the, the, the project that was was done. Uh, I'm happy to answer questions and kind of see where you guys wanted to go with the, with, with the presentation. Any questions from council members? No. So, um, Obviously, this is just a quick overview of, uh, of what you uh, uh, completed a couple of years ago. The data that's in that report, uh, I'm un under the understanding there's no um, paper copy of it, but is the data, uh, is the da data there uh, transferable to a paper document that council could have for review in a staff report? Is the information that's uh, that you provided the municipality is that uh, something that would be able to uh, be accomplished? Yeah, um, yeah. I think I'd have to go back and take a look and see what uh, to you know a few years back when we delivered the project, uh, there might have been a PowerPoint presentation with some with some um, screenshots and kind of summary of uh, the the condition of the assets that we collected and stuff. Um, I'd have to go back and take a look at that. I mean, that could be provided in the software itself. We can always um, pull out all the data and it's like an Excel spreadsheet tabular format. Uh, so if you wanted the condition of each street segment, and any historical data that might've been put into the system. Um, and then you can also, you know, whatever budget you, you wanna derive in the software, you could just print a report from that and it's gonna, you know, print out, you know, a three-year plan or five-year plan. Um, so that kind of information can be, can be brought out yeah, that's what I was sort of looking for to, to give us uh, uh, an idea of what, what the process should be over the next uh, three or four budgets and then and beyond and how we uh, recapture and rebuild uh, the road network within the municipality is, is something that uh, is uh, uh, um, of interest of council and, uh, and our constituents. I appreciate that. Is there any other questions, please? Go ahead, Councillor. Um, yes. Do, do you have the technology to do uh, gravel roads, any kind of condition assessment? Yeah. So that's actually a service that we are close to coming out for this year. Um, it's nothing, uh, not a huge technology advancement. I mean, gravel roads, you, there's no way to do it in an automated way that, uh, that, that I was just describing for a surface treated road. Uh, but we would be collecting imagery on it and it would be manually processed um, with trained technicians. And so they would be looking for specific aspects on that. Um, that's, you know, gravel roads fall in a different bucket than, than a surface treated road. You know, it's, it's more routine maintenance that you want to kind of capture. Um, so we're looking at things like ditching and stuff, stuff like that. Um, and so that's something that I was saying about about a month or so, we'll have more details on exactly what that service entails. And you know, it's a lot more cost effective than, than collecting it on, on a paved surface. And we know there's a lot of municipalities in Ontario that have been requesting that service, kind of coupled with the uh, with the surface treated roads. Any, any further questions? Go ahead, Councilor. Now, um, going through this budget process, there's a couple of roads that were came to our attention and needed work that we weren't expecting were would have been due yet because they were just a couple of years ago they were worked on. So, with your technology app, is there a way of pinpointing these roads and sections of the roads that are coming due before they should for further uh, further investigation, whether it's whether there's something wrong with the base of the road or, or something else. Because as far as I as I, I understand right now you're just doing a surface scan, correct? You're not nothing we're doing like surface. Yeah. So um 
we, we're only looking at the surface. And if we don't have the history of what work has been performed, sometimes the surface can be misleading uh, because it may look just perfect, uh, but maybe the wrong treatment was applied to it and the road will deteriorate much faster than it should based on what our observations were and the data that we're able to capture. That happened recently, actually a few weeks ago with another uh, municipality that we uh, that we worked with. Um, you know, they were they were contesting some of the, the conditions on some of the streets and we realized that the the streets were in need of a complete reconstruction, but they just kind of did a, a little surface treatment on it. So when we scanned, it looked great. I mean, it looked like a brand new road, but in reality, it deteriorated much faster. And before you know it, a few years later, they back up again for on the docket, you know, to kind of be worked on. So, um, so if we have history of what work has been performed, then we see that there's, uh, that's why frequent scans are uh, recommended. So then you can start to tell the story about what's happening with certain streets, and then you can change the treatment recommendation uh, around that. Um, but the surface does tell you a lot about what's happening underneath as well too. So certain distresses like an alligator crack uh, is gonna show that there's a load bearing distress that's happening. So something's happening beneath the surface that you need to address. This is, it's, it's more of a, an aggressive um, treatment that is required. Okay, so I guess uh, further more on that point, will, it, will the system flag portions of the roads to uh, bring it to the user's attention that this road is deteriorating faster than it should? Or does it just show you the current condition compared to last scan? Like, will it, will it flag spots if they're deteriorating faster than it should be? Or is it Yeah, so if we have multiple scans, um, so we, usually we, we need at least two scans of, of, of data, you know, to start then compiling a benchmark from, from the year before. And you can then identify street that is deteriorating too fast, you know, compared to compared to what it would be hypothetically based on the deterioration curves. And then you can start to draw more conclusions from that, you know. So we, we have an in-house pavement engineer that can look at those aspects a little bit closer um, and try to understand, you know, what's what's happening. Is it the soil types that are causing that what type of thing? Any other questions? Um, yeah, okay. So um, uh, we appreciate you taking the time and giving us this report. We were uh, we were looking for uh, some more information. I think you've given us a, an idea and I think a, a, a translation of the information collected into uh, a document that uh, the council can review as we move forward and, uh, and uh, you know, apply its, uh, its information to our budget process as we go. And if I'm hearing you properly, I think uh, you've done it, uh, the scan two years, a couple of years ago, is that correct? I think it's, uh, I think we're coming up on three years. Yeah. yeah and so you're recommending every three years to keep it. So we create a history as uh, the council of maintenance question that uh, we can start to identify if there's any other problem beneath the service rather than just the service problem. Correct. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And um, when would you have that uh, 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 gravel road assessment uh, yeah, I think in about a month or so, um, we plan to host a webinar that we were going to be uh, talking about that new service. Um, so I'll make I'll make a note here in the file to uh, that you guys are interested to get additional cert, you know information on that. And yeah. uh, if you guys were looking to rescan your streets at the same time, if you wanted to combine it with you know the gravel at the same time, it it just be more cost effective. Uh, but the car is zipping around Ontario pretty much all summer, so we're we're usually within the vicinity pretty several times at least, you know, so from a logistic standpoint, you know, we can, we can add it on pretty easily. Yeah. I think uh, it would be relevant to have that information. Uh, about 50% of our roads in the rural area are gravel. So they're quite significant. 49 uh, kilometers that you mentioned, we have about 47 gravel. So uh, sure. significant uh, uh, amount of kilometers uh, within the, the rural area. And uh, we would uh, appreciate uh, whenever that uh, system is up and running that uh, perhaps we reschedule and have another scan and start sure. collecting some deeper data. Yeah, we can, we can send you additional information. Perfect. Thank you kindly. And also, if there's no other questions, everybody's fine. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate that, John. And uh, Absolutely. have yourself a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Okay. So all those in favor? Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.
Okay. Be it hereby resolved that Council Corporation of Village of Maricopa Wolford does hereby receive report CAO 02 2023 being a report to describe the voting process for filling the vac current vacant seat on council and that council does hereby approve the voting process described in report CAO 02-2023 to appoint a person who has consented to accept the office to fill the current vacant seat on council of America, sorry, on Mar Mar I'm say Maricopa Wolford, on uh, Maricopa Ward. Uh, Councillor Grew, will you move please? Yes. Councillor Maitland, will you second please? Yes. So, do we have any questions? And has everybody received the letters uh, from the two candidates? Does everybody have that at the table? Yes. Yes, we all have that? Okay, so now we'll uh, have a discussion. So, who would like to start off? Should we have the uh, report first? Sorry. Did you want to do the report? Uh, well, the reports. I think the report. But I could give you a very brief synopsis. Just that sometimes it helps verbally. Yes. Please counsel. I was just yeah. I was just assuming everybody read it. But if you want to give us a quick two minutes. Um, the process essentially, as you've already indicated, is to get the motion on the table for a, a, a mover and a seconder. That provides us the opportunity to discuss the candidates that have expressed interest in being appointed. Um, after that discussion, um, I will call in random order. Um, the members of council, each council member would have one vote to vote for either of the two candidates. Uh, the candidate with the, the largest number of the votes would be appointed if you don't have a tie. If you have a tie, then the motion fails. Mm -hmm. um, at that point, you have an opportunity to go through that process again. Uh, if it still fails, we have our trustee black cauldron right here, which is a pot where we go back to basics and we have the name of each uh, interested candidate in that. Uh, Julia will hold it above my head so I can't see it. <laughs> we'll put the names in, you'll know there's nothing up my sleeves. Yeah. And we'll show you inside the cabinets, the, the pot first. Um, and then uh, we essentially pull the name from the, the, the pot. Perfect, thank you very much. So we'll open the floor for discussion of council. So uh, just a question on the certainly. process, please. Um, does the mayor vote or like there won't be a tie between the three of us. So um, does the mayor get a vote to create a tie is my question. The mayor always has the right to vote. Um, starts with the councillors. I call the councillors in random order, which is unlike the usual thing we typically call the circuit. Um, then uh, if you have, say you have uh, uh, two council members for one candidate, one for another candidate. If the, if the mayor votes in favor of the first candidate, then that person is appointed because they have the majority of votes. If the mayor votes for the second candidate, you now have a tie, so that that um, uh, motion fails. Then, as I said, we go through the process again. If it happens again on the second one, we go to that. Um, the mayor does have the right to abstain from voting. So, if he gets a clear direction from council that you know, two are strongly in favor one's opposed or perhaps all three are, are in favor, then with no offense to your no worship, then his vote becomes redundant. You still have the right to vote, but it must be his choice whether he wants to abstain or vote. Yeah, thank you. Just for a clarification, I think my um, my opportunity here would be to support uh, council in, the, in their direction. So whatever, uh, whatever discussions are at the table, whatever council decides is the appropriate uh, um, selection. Uh, I can assure you, if, if it comes down to a two to one, I will support the majority of council in in, the, in their decision and selection. So I think uh, what we need to do is uh, is come together as a as a body and uh, and support uh, the majority of council, whatever that selection would be. And that's the way I intend on on voting. Whatever council feels is relevant, I I'll support them uh, council's decision on that. The only thing I can the only thing I would like to add is that, uh, you know, we're here to select a, a new member of council that will uh, be supportive and uh, be engaging and uh, help move the agenda for the four year period of council. So mm -hmm. I will uh, listen to 
Yeah, do we have something? Um, not from this side, but we'll respond to that in a second. But, um, the one thing I do want to clarify is we have the report. Yeah. Um, so the first uh, vote we're going to be taking is whether to receive and approve the process. Yeah. And, and then, then, then we'll really following the report is the resolution after which you would have the discussion of the candidates and take the votes. Okay, so we're just going to receive this report now and then we'll move into the dodge up next year. Okay. Yep. No problem. Thank you. I've got to go this way. Okay. So there we go. So this will be the debate. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So um, all those in favor of uh, receiving the report, carry. Okay. So it hereby resolved that whereas at their special meeting on January 30th, 2023, council declared. The council seat, the seat of council, Merrick uh, Ward, as a vacant, effectively immediately per section 2621 of the Municipal Act 2001. And whereas on March 2nd, 2023, as per council's direction, the CAO clerk contacted four eligible candidates from Merrick Ward and the mayor from the 2022 municipal election to seek their consent to being appointed to fill the vacant seat. And whereas Ann Barr and Eve Karametra were the two candidates who sent in a response granting consent to be appointed with written expressions of interest. And whereas council does hereby receive the written expressions of interest from Ann Barr and Eve Karametra for consideration. Uh, Councilor Guru, will you move please? Yes. And Councilor Ireland, you second please. Yes. So. This is where so any council member want to start the conversation? Yes, okay. All right, council. It's my ward, so yes. Um, so, so I, I yes. just uh, just did a, a little prep. Uh, so as I said last week, I thought the fair the fairest way we know would be filling the vacancy with a by election. That's what they do federally and provincially, but because we have the provision under the municipal act. That saved us. We opted out to um, because of cost to appoint someone. So that puts a huge responsibility on us to do our best to select someone that reflects the wishes of the greatest number of Maricopa residents. So I'm just going to quote you, um, uh, Mr. Yeah. Cameron. So back in November, uh, November 2021, council was in the same position of having to appoint uh, someone to fill a vacancy in Wolford. Uh, so Mr. Cameron, who was in the same position that I am today, uh, the sole representative sitting at the table, who was a resident of the ward in question. So council representation for Wolford needs to be a familiar person for that ward. It needs to be a person that the ward feels confident in and has trust in and is approachable by its ward members. The ward system allows council to be more likely a local representative and aware of local issues and is also less likely that one particular point of view or systemic interest will be dominated at council. So it is important that we draw council members from a specific area so there is that conversation at the table as we're making decisions. We do make the decisions on behalf of the whole municipality, so it's important that we have representation from Wolford, from a Wolford resident, who is particularly aware of the knowledge and the wants and needs of the constituency. So council needs to show its support at the table for Wolford. And as it stands, your, yeah. your opinion was taken into consideration and this, Mr. Ireland uh, was selected. Um, as the other res uh, just the other member happened to be a, a, a Merrickville resident. So. so this most recent election showed Merrickville Ward agreed and overwhelmingly voted in two Merrickville residents. Um, it came up repeatedly while I was campaigning, um, including at the all candidates meeting. It's important we respect that wish and fill the vacancy with uh, another resident of the ward. So Ann Barr is well aware of the knowledge and wants and needs of the constituency having been a longtime resident, a uh, former business owner, and a two-time council member. Although she was not successful in this most recent mayoral bid, it was very close, and the re election results showed that she has broad support to our community. Uh, with roughly two and a half times the electorate, the difference between first and second place for mayor was much smaller than the difference between second and third place in Merrickville Ward. Um, so you yourself, Mr. Mayor, were quoted in Inside Ottawa Valley saying she ran a fantastic campaign and that she's a strong community member. I agree. Absolutely. I am confident that those who voted for her would be happy to see her sitting at the council table, even if it is not as mayor. Mm -hmm. So Ms. Barr is already familiar with council procedures and the budget process. Having two brand new councillors and a mayor, um, it's new in your role. Um, and, and adding an experienced member who requires minimal training benefits us all. 
And as Owen mentioned last week, the contract to manage the wastewater uh, treatment plant needs to be renewed in 2025 and something that directly affects Maricopa residents. So uh, selecting Ms. Barr adds a competent, knowledgeable candidate who will allow us to be a council we can be proud of. Um, not um, Appointing Ms. Barr not only ensures a second voice for Merrickville, it ensures we have a strong council that uh, benefits the entire community. And a well-run council will reflect well on all of us. And finally, just add a little second, why wouldn't we want to add a woman who earns you uh, points at Trivia Night? <laughs> <laughs> well stated, Councillor. Well stated. Uh, Councillor Maitland, you might as well go around the table. And... Yeah. No, uh, when uh, Mr. Oldfield resigned, it was something that I wasn't expecting. I don't think anybody was expecting at the time. And uh, being new to council, it seems like a lot on our plate all of a sudden. So I put a lot of thought and effort and uh, coming how I'd come to the conclusion I came tonight on who, who I'd support. We had two great candidates uh, that ran the last election, uh, both put their name and both give back to community lots. Um, I I think for, for, for me, I would support Ambar in this just because I've, I've worked with her with the fair, uh, medical fair before. And I think she brought a lot of value to the year she served on council. And, and for me too, Part of the reason I ran for council is because there's a lot of there was a lot of people in our ward that were mentioning that we want to make sure some, our ward represented by somebody who lives in the ward, mm -hmm. and that just just for me is one more one more check that Ann has. Okay, perfect. Anything to point uh, <clears throat> to say, Councilor? Yeah, I've uh, I've got great respect for both candidates. I'm uh, glad we have uh, two strong ones to choose from who have a great background both in, uh, in participating with the municipality in various um, roles and are very engaged in the community. So we can't go wrong with either one. That's, that's really the, the bottom line here. So it's, it's a tough choice. I consider both candidates, uh, know them well and consider them both friends. And so hopefully uh, this doesn't uh, create any rifts. <laughs> but uh, I look at the logic of, uh, of the fact that uh, uh, the the election for the Merrickville Ward, um, Mr. Grummate came in second place mm -hmm. and uh, received a, a, a significant percentage of the votes, as far as I remember. I don't have the numbers in front of me, but uh, combining that with uh, the fact that I was waffling when we discussed this the last time on process, with whether we would send the invitation to the mayoral candidates, whether that made sense or not, whether they would accept, it was kind of, uh, I was back and forth on. So to me, um, it could have went either way. It could have been just the meritful uh, candidates at the time that we would invite again, or we included the, the mayoral candidates uh, on a whim, I guess. So to me, the uh, combine, combining that with the strong representation and voices we've heard in, in support of Eve, um, I think my vote would go for Eve at this point. Okay. Well, thank you for that. Um, I think uh, any, anything else anybody would like to add? No? Okay. Um, as uh, as Councillor uh, Grohl pointed out, I think representation of a ward is essential. I fought for that for you uh, when uh, um, Don had passed away. And I think uh, to the point where it's absolutely important that a representative have a deep knowledge within the uh, ward itself. So these two candidates both uh, present that possibility. Uh, he, uh, uh, and uh, being a longstanding uh, member of the community, Eve, with all his engagements within uh, the community, but as stated in the beginning, I think there's a consensus here with the majority of council to go with Anne. So I think uh, I will allow council to move that uh, direction forward. And I believe we are looking at supporting Anne. Is that correct, Councillor? Yeah. And uh, so that's, I guess that's what we'll do. Do we need to take a vote or? You do, Your Worship. So at this stage, I would just so like- So you're gonna call the vote? I will call the vote. <clears throat> Council members in random order. 
uh, recording the vote um, and then determining uh, who the appointed candidate was. Okay, so we go ahead and do that. Please. Your Worship. So, uh, Councillor Maitland, Miss Amber, Councillor Girl, Anmar, Councillor Ireland, Eve Girl Major, and Mayor Cameron. I'll go with the majority of council and support Anne. Thank you, Worship. So the, the appointed candidate would be Ann Barr. Okay. Okay. Now we can make the stage and then just enter Ann Barr's name in the field and, uh, and then sign the resolution. So I'd like to offer Ann her congratulations to be appointed to council and uh, when will and be sworn in and may I make a recommendation? Uh, completely open to council's recommendation. I, I appreciate that. Could we do it at a regular council meeting so that we have an opportunity to take a new uh, picture? Because we have presently have a picture of council uh, in the lobby that would be outdated. Uh, and I think it might be an opportunity to invite the uh, public back uh, to see and swearing in, and we all have the opportunity to congratulate her at that moment in time, and you have an opportunity to take a picture that can be replaced in the lobby. So just a suggestion, does council feel comfortable with that? Yes. That's perfectly fine. We're so happy to do that. Uh, the, the next regular meeting, uh, March 27th, I believe we have uh, two minor variance hearings just before the meeting mm -hmm. at, at six o'clock. Yeah. Um, so I don't believe they're going to be long hearings. Yeah. So there may be an opportunity squeezed in between those hearings and the regular meeting. Uh, but there are some chances meetings will go long and then we have time to do the photo. How does how does uh, April thirteenth look? Does that look? Uh, will that be the next meeting? Uh, does that look like it may be uh, a better? Opportunity and to do that, and what we maybe will do, Your Worship, is the swearing in would be quite short. Yeah. So I'm, I'm sure you would be able to do that before the meeting. The photos are the question whether we have time yeah. to set photos and so forth. Yeah. So the, the next meeting after that. I have a Tuesday, April 11th, because it's the day after Easter Monday. Mm -hmm. So we could certainly do that then that have the photo opportunity at that point. Okay, so would, uh, what's the availability of council members to do that? I just thought it would be an opportunity to do it at a meeting because we're all at the meeting. Certainly. And rather than schedule a, a special meeting just for that, mm -hmm. uh, we could fold it into it uh, into a regular meeting and have an opportunity to uh, have another full house, which is nice to see. Oh, man. I didn't see you back there. Congratulations. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, did, I, didn't, I didn't even notice you there. So it would just give you a bit of a shock there. But uh, yeah, congratulations. Uh, uh, I think it would be it would be nice to have uh, have the public back and that opportunity and then um, have council back at a regular meeting if uh, if we can do it, I know I know the next meeting is is sort of log jammed, yeah. but we do if we do have an opportunity that would be great. Uh, but if we, <coughs> we could definitely do it for the thirteenth, the meeting on the, I believe it's the thirteenth. Eleven. Eleven. Oh, it was it April eleven. Oh, okay. I don't know so, why I had thirteenth in my head, but yeah, um, no worries. Um, if if I may make a suggestion yeah. that. Um, if yeah, I know it's 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 sort of nice to do the photos at the time of the swearing in. Yeah. Um, yeah, we could plan for that if if council is yeah. agreeable to that. In the off chance that the the hearings go late, then you would just have to push the photo opportunity to the thirteenth. It's sorry to the eleventh. You got me. I got you. <laughs> to the eleventh. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, but I, I'm sure council wants to swear in this bar as soon as possible, and that would be the next regular meeting on the 27th. Yeah, I'm going to leave it in, in your hands. You, uh, you're the driving mechanism behind the uh, agendas, so um, I'll leave it in your capable hands. So we'll either do it on the 27th or the 11th. Oh, yeah, great. So great. that that would be that would be nice. Great. So, Thanks, great. so uh, we'll all be able to address appropriately for that uh, photo op.
Thanks, Richard. I appreciate it. You're back then? Yeah, all the back of Okay, perfect. So, on to the addition to the agenda. Okay. We hereby resolve that the Council of the Corporation of the Village of Maricopa Wolford here, hereby receive report PW01-2023 being an information report for the current tender closing for the 5,500 plow truck for the operations department and that Council award a tender to South Bank Dodge Chrysler for the sum of $111,579 plus HST. Uh, Councilor Maitland, will you use that motion yes. Councilor Allen, would you second that motion, please, sir? Thank you. Okay. Mr. Mayor, let's get Brad Cole on. Yeah. On here. So we have a bit of a, a report here. And Mr. Cole, will you speak to the report, please? Uh, yes, uh, through your worship. Everybody can hear me okay? Yes, we yeah. can. Uh, yeah, so we had uh, we'd issued this uh, tender on February 13th, uh, and it closed March 10th. Uh, we had issued the tender. Uh, it's on our website, as well as uh, we issued it out to seven different dealerships uh, in our area. Um, there was only uh, uh, Ford or uh, Dodge that was able to bid on this due to the size of the truck. Uh, Chevrolet does not uh, produce a truck of, of the size we needed. Uh, so the tender was sent out to all those, uh, and the only uh, bid received back was uh, from South Bank Dodge, as you see. Um, so that is a uh, complete truck with the uh, the dump box, uh, all the toolboxes that we had requested, um, uh, and, and able to produce it within our um, window that we would requested it in. Uh, so it is uh, staff's recommendation uh, to uh, to move forward with with this current bid um, and to accept South Bank as the provider. I'm happy to answer any questions that council may have. Okay, just uh, for a little bit more clarification, this was brought to the last uh, term of council and it was approved and moved forward and it was a uh, carry forward item. And I believe it was carry forward because we are having a problem sourcing a vehicle. Is that uh, correct? Uh, that is correct, Your Worship. Yeah, there's a, there is a, an issue sourcing vehicles right now, kind of uh, nationwide, but uh, this company was able to bid and um, says they can supply a vehicle within the uh, required window we asked for. Yeah, and uh, this vehicle is replacing a five-ton plow, which we're taking out of service. Is that also correct? Or would you be able to clarify on that? Uh, this is actually going to replace a, a one-ton plow that we're using. Uh, that's just kind of getting close to its uh, end of life cycle for plowing. It's high mileage, and um, that uh, plow route is quite um, substantial. Uh, this would permit us to carry more uh, more salt and sand on board, and uh, was also uh, wanted to utilize uh, for evening maintenance on roads for checking snow drifts and stuff like that during the winter. Instead of having to take out one of the huge highway plows, uh, this truck uh, would have the capability of doing the same thing uh, and be more fuel efficient. Any questions from council members? Go ahead, councillor. Uh, the report doesn't state what uh, dollar value was approved in the previous budget for the truck. Uh, part one of the question, uh, what was that amount and how does this quote compare to that? And do we think because of the, the scarcity of these trucks that we're overpaying for? Do you care to answer that? I'll answer. Go ahead, Mr. Cole. Yeah, through you, Your Worship, there was uh, 130,000 uh, was approved for the truck uh, in, the, in the past council. Uh, so we are uh, substantially under budget on this. Um, and sorry, uh, Councillor Ireland, what was the second part of your question? Um, do we think this quote is higher than expected because of the scarcity of these vehicles? Uh, through your worship, I, I actually find this to be under um, what I was expecting. Um, just in talking with some of the dealerships uh, that obviously probably couldn't produce a vehicle, uh, the numbers were coming in uh, higher than this. Any further questions? Um, yes. Okay. Is this truck fully fit up or does it still require some uh, accessories to make it fully usable? Uh, through your worship, the truck is, is complete, uh, with the exception of the ask in the, in the budget this year for the sander and the plow to go with it. 
but it is a it is a complete truck um, dump box um, hydraulics uh, emergency uh, sort of caution lighting all that stuff is already all on the vehicle uh, it will be the municipal color and um, licensed and, and ready for use immediately so can you refresh our memory and and uh, uh give us a dollar number for the salt box and the plow if you recall right. uh, through your worship it's it's a capital ask this year of around twenty thousand uh, dollars but we are looking at um the, the option to trade in the current plow uh, that is on the one-ton truck to see if there is a, a bit of a, a rebate on that okay. any other questions from council members um What's the timeline for delivery before the fall? I assume. Uh, yes, through your worship. Yeah, at the uh, the closing date for the thing is the end of October. Uh, they said they'd be able to supply before that without any issue. Go ahead, Councilor Arden. Um, do we have the opportunity to back out of it at this point, given that it was approved in a previous budget? So not approve the purchase now. So I'm saying. I guess part two of that question is what is the impact of not purchasing this truck? Is it severe or is it minor? Would uh, you like to answer that question or would we? Um, that's, uh, apologies, that's a question I didn't anticipate. Um, we have issued a tender. I don't believe at the stage that we're obligated to complete the purchase mm -hmm. with collected prices. Council could direct staff not to complete the purchase, but I want to validate that with the village's lawyer to make sure and look at the tender wording. Um, the just to be clear, my understanding is that it was approved as a capital budget item in a previous budget, um, and then that was carried over to this year to make the purchase. And so, just to be clear, today is the request to make the purchase. Mm -hmm. To make sure there's no confusion on that. So, to if you were to do that. Um, to, you would essentially have to either simply vote the rec the, the uh, motion down, or if you want to have further discussion and exploration, we'd have to defer the item. So we'd have to move to defer the item. Mm -hmm. um, if I may suggest, I think there's a question that Councillor uh, Ireland offered for May version yeah. that um, was it was it was hidden in the first question. That is, what would the impact be of not purchasing this? If I may suggest, perhaps it'd be great to hear from. Brad Cole and that. So, Mr. Cole, would you be able to answer that uh, second part of the question from Councilor Ireland, please? Sorry, it, it kind of, my apologies, it kind of broke up a bit when, when he was speaking. I, I didn't get it clearly. Could you repeat it? Would you like to restate your question, Councilor? Yeah, if we didn't go ahead with purchase at this time, what would be the impact to public works in terms of efficiency, um, any other dollar value impact? Um, through your worship, uh, there, there would be an impact. The, the current truck is getting to the end of the life cycle uh, and is starting to require a lot more maintenance at a lot higher costs. Um, it's seeing increased use. Uh, the other side of that is uh, we currently have a, a older uh, five ton truck that is, is coming towards the end of its life and is going to have a substantial cost to rebuild that truck if, if that's uh, and that'll be a report to council as well. But this truck would be able to utilize a lot of the uh, jobs that that truck did. Um, so, so I do believe there would be a significant impact um, if this truck wasn't purchased um, within the fleet for, for um, various operations. It would be used for, uh, for snow removal, obviously, in the wintertime, uh, but also in the summertime for, for cold patch and road maintenance, uh, brushing, um, you know, employee transport. Uh, that's why we went to a, a four-door vehicle to be able to carry more employees and use less vehicles uh, to get to the same jobs. Instead of taking two vehicles, we could take one. Um, so there, there is savings as well for council through stuff like that. Um, we would utilize that uh, at night for snow drifts uh, off of the fields as opposed to having to use the large uh, highway plow. Uh, the one-ton truck just isn't heavy enough of a truck to do the, the job now, um, but this one would be. Uh, and, and we use data from the counties of Leeds and Granville. They have three of those trucks that are utilized for the exact same thing. Um, and they did it as a cost savings as well, instead of putting the large highway plows on the road. So hopefully that answered your question. Yes, thank you. Uh, just for curiosity, uh, 
Mr. Cole, uh, do we have a mileage on that truck that we're uh, replacing? Do, do you recall what the is? Uh, yeah, so so we, we would, um, and, and I brought it forward to the last council, we would still use that vehicle as a, a, a transport vehicle for staff, um, but it's, its current mileage right now is at about 186,000 kilometers. And that's that's all been plowing mileage. Okay. And what's the year of the truck again? It said 2014. 2014. Okay. Okay. So, any other questions? Does council feel comfortable with moving forward, or did you want to defer it for further investigation, or are you comfortable with moving forward? I'm comfortable with moving forward. Councilor Island. Yeah, the only reason I raised that as an option is because the budget pressure we're under this year that this would go a long way to alleviating that if we could defer it. Yeah. And potentially, as build dates become for the, this particular model of vehicle, if it's scarce right now, if we wait a year or two, it may not be so scarce, we get a better deal on it then. So that's the reason I'm bringing this up. But I'm fine to go ahead with it, I think, based on what uh, Mr. Cole has said. Okay. So then, uh, given the comment, I will uh, call for a vote. All in favor? Thank you. Carried. <clears throat> so, no motions, no deferred items. Do we have any questions from the public electronically? I have none on my phone. Julia, do we have any? None? None? Mm -hmm. Any questions from the audience? Any questions? Okay. So, I guess we'll move on. Huh? Well, I am surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I am surprised. Yeah. <laughs> I brought a whole briefcase of answers. <laughs> There we go. Okay, so be it hereby resolved uh, that bylaw 17, 2023, being a bylaw to confirm the uh, proceedings of council meeting of March 13th, 2023, be read a first and second time, and that bylaw 17, 2023, be read a third and final time and passed. Uh, Councillor Nathan, will you move? Please? Yes. Councillor Ireland, will you second, please? Yes. And. All those in favor, please. Let's carry it. There we go. Three. And go. Okay. Be it hereby resolved that this regular meeting of the Council of Corporation of the Village of Maryville Wolford does hereby adjourn at 831. Is that the correct time? Yeah. This oh, that's, 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 yeah, 831 p.m. until the next meeting of council on Wednesday, March 22nd, 2023, or until the call of the mayor subject to need. Yeah. Council Rule, will you move? Yes. Councilor Maven, will you second? Yes. All those in favor, thank you very much. And uh, appreciate the good conversation.